Hi, it's Andrew from Secure Ninja TV. We're here in Dubai at JISEC 2023, but we haven't come alone. We're here with our CEO, Shaquille Tufal, who was invited to speak at the JISEC Cyber Star stage. He spoke about a case study where we assess the threat surface area of a large complex network. Let's listen to what he had to say. Secure Ninja. All right, good afternoon, folks. So, as uh, the introduction says, I'm the chief ninja for Secure Ninja, which is a global company, and we focus on cybersecurity training and professional services. And what I want to talk about today, after 20 years of meeting hundreds, thousands of clients all over the world, we have noticed some cybersecurity challenges. Most of these you probably know, but these are constantly evolving. And what you can see is that in 25 years, we have gone from almost zero people on the World Wide Web in 1989, 1990, to over five billion people that are interconnected through phones, IoT, mobile devices, laptops, desktops, you name it. That means five billion people can access your web services, whether it's a website or other devices on the internet, and that's a very large attack surface. So the big challenge is, how do we protect against five billion people? Hopefully, a very small portion are malicious or have bad, bad intentions, but we have to protect against them because we're protecting very valuable assets. We also have noticed that complexity has been increasing and will continue to increase for many, many years. And we also have frameworks, infrastructure, that is not in our control anymore. It used to be you owned your own network, you had your own data center, you hosted your own servers. Now we are renting from the cloud. We're renting from applications. We're using open source plugins, APIs, all kinds of different services that are not 100% in our control. And we have to now partner to have good security services. The other issue is that we have a lot of laws, a lot of regulations, more and more privacy, security, laws are coming out all the time. The problem is, is that that's the minimum standards. We have to do more than just the compliance. We have to do more than just the checklist because that's just the minimum. Attackers already know what the minimums are and they can go far beyond that. And with all the different technologies and all the different areas that we're growing in, in technology and our governance and laws and regulations, we have to be experienced, we have to have training, we have to understand these new attack surfaces, the vulnerabilities, these exploits. So what are we trying to protect? You see, the whole reason we do security is to protect something valuable. So in most cases, when I ask organizations, what are you trying to protect? They will talk about data, they'll talk about their information, they'll talk about financial systems, money. So you can see the list here. We have data, we have money, we have time, we have reputation and brand, trust. We also have legal and compliance. A lot of it has to do with money. But in today's world, it goes far beyond that. When you look at medical, military, intelligence, all kinds of different areas of the industries that can also mean that you need to protect infrastructure. It can mean human lives. It can mean much, much more than just money. So, again, I had talked about the fact that we've done hundreds, thousands over 20 years of assessments, of looking at different systems, both government and the uh, private sector. And when we go in, we need to do penetration tests, we need to do security assessments, and we're just looking at one very small portion of the entire infrastructure. Infrastructure is more and more interconnected than ever before, right? It's not a single application, you double click on your desktop, you run the application and you're done. Connects to a client, connects to a server, connects to another device. That, that is not the normal standard infrastructure anymore. When we take a look at organizations, we do the whiteboard, we look at the different architectures, we see a very simple interface. In this case, this is an actual case study of a probably top 10 largest bank in the world. 
and they had a web application they wanted to do a security assessment on and we saw that it was a three-tiered application a front-end web a middle tier with the application logic the program the code and a database backend and this is what everybody thought it looked like when we started inspecting everything that was coming in and out what we call ingress and egress we found 23 different interfaces that were connecting into the database, connecting into the service from the back end, right? Now, a good thief will throw a brick through your window or break your front door and they will be caught very quickly. Attackers are not bad thieves. They're very good thieves. They do reconnaissance. They look at your entire architecture. They look at your ingress, egress. They know when you're home, when you're not home. And they find the weakest link and that's how they attack. So this application, which started out with a diagram on a whiteboard, and then we had a wireframe that looked like a very simple three-tiered web application. When we saw these additional interfaces, we mapped them out, and that's what it looks like. Now, how many areas in here can you find weaknesses and attack surfaces? We found 90 pages, 90 pages of weaknesses. So, I don't have a lot of time today, but I could spend probably three, four hours just on this diagram showing you, and, and it's color-coded because the purple is FTP. Is FTP secure? No. HTTPS is secure. It's blue. The yellow is SQL. Is that secure? No. The brown is HTTP. Is that secure? No. So just looking at the data flow and the protocols, these are internal, or so we think they're internal, but all you need is one of those interfaces to come into your network, and then they can do whatever they want, right? So that's the area that we need to grow in. That's an area of maturity that is still very weak. And we're at the very beginning of IT, right? Information technology may be 50 years old. The web was created in 1989, and the web applications didn't really become mature until the end of the 90s, early 2000s, and that's 30 years, three decades. So we have a lot of uh, technology, a lot of uh, great things that are coming in the future, but we need to look at the bigger picture. We can't look at individual systems. We have to look at how they interconnect with each other, right? The analog days and the physical protections on the network, they're not enough. We have to do more. I'd love to talk to you more. If you have any questions, please come by the booth. Other than that, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Shaquille. Do we have any questions from the audience? I've got a, got a question for you. Sure. So when it comes to cyber security on blockchain, what do you see the biggest barriers um, and uh, problems moving forward? Well, the biggest barriers on uh, blockchain are not really with the technology. The, the encryption technology is, is quite safe and it's quite good. It's, it's the political and social and infrastructure that has to be standardized. There's really not a lot of standardization there. And that's, that's the issue. It's sort of like you can say, is AES good? Well, AES is the standard. It's the standard for the US government. It's the standard for many organizations. There's nothing wrong with AES. It's the implementation, it's how it's used, how it's protected. And again, the bigger picture, that's what we have to look at. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. We've had a lot of fun in Dubai, where even the bus shelters are air conditioned. We hope you've enjoyed watching these videos as much as we've enjoyed making them. Please remember to subscribe and to like, and we'll talk to you again soon. I'm Andrew Howard from Secure Ninja TV.